One and all, welcome in my course. For the next uh, two months, you are going to learn interesting methods and analysis that can be uh, applied into an uh, organizational context. Maybe a uh, course online is not uh, the most preferred uh, way of uh, teaching and guiding students, but still I'm pretty certain that uh, nevertheless it can be insightful and fun. After this brief video, I will introduce course, assignments, requirements, and additional aspects uh, in a presentation. See you in a bit. One and all, welcome to my course. In this course, I will uh, help you to learn more about individual and organizational level diagnosis. This course, MD3, will introduce basic concepts related to diagnosis of personality at different levels, individual level and organizational level. In this presentation I'm going to introduce uh, basic elements related to uh, the course and also I will uh, describe some basic requirements regarding passing the course. So let's move on to part number one. Agenda for today, it's, uh, we start with uh, say hello. Uh, my name is uh, Jacek, you can call me Jacek, you can call me Jack or you can call me Jay. Uh, I'm coordinating the course, uh, I'm also giving uh, uh, lectures and I'm going to uh, uh, guide one of the workshops. In overall, I'm going to help you to uh, uh, learn as uh, much as possible and also I'm going to uh, uh, help you with uh, specific uh, group assignments. If you have any questions regarding the course, uh, you can of course uh, ask me during our uh, sessions, but also you can drop me a line using this email. Hello, welcome to the course. Besides uh, introducing the team, uh, not only myself, I would like to discuss uh, topics, then I would like to discuss assignments and specific quizzes that are part of this course. Later on uh, in this video clip I will uh, explain requirements regarding the exam and other requirements, for instance um, group work that you are going to perform um, in this course. And, of course, I'm going to introduce individual and organizational diagnosis as a core part of this course. Besides me, in this team we have Matching Assistant, we have Dan Asfar and we have uh, Ster. Dan Asfar is a, a PhD candidate in our uh, section uh, organizational psychology section and from this year Stere is our uh, teaching assistant. Me uh, and uh, Dan and Stere are going to help you with your uh, group assignment, with your psychometrical uh, project. Uh, myself I'm going to uh, teach group number one and later on uh, during one of the online meetings, I'll explain who it belongs to group one. Dan is going to tutor uh, group two. Stare is going to tutor group three and four. Okay, let's move on. Let's see some basic elements of the course. First, focus on topics. This course is connected to other courses that some of you uh, might take uh, throughout your study at TFU. So it's uh, connected to other MD uh, courses. Of course, it's connected to statistics and research methods. We are going to combine those uh, courses and help you to learn more in specific applied field. Please remember that this course is designed uh, as a gate that will help you 
to enter our master program, Work and Organizational Psychology. As you probably know, if you've checked the requirements for this master program, to enter as a full student this program, you need to pass this MN3, MND3 course. Of course, if you do not have such a specific plans to enter the program, nevertheless, I hope that you will enjoy the course and you will find it useful for your future education or professional career. Let's move on. First, I would like to indicate that within this uh, course we have two types of topics. First, uh, first type focuses on methods. So on one hand, we focus on individual level diagnosis, something that is more important for deciding upon what will happen to an individual that is uh, uh, recruited at the company. And also, we are going to focus on team-level uh, diagnosis. So what a researcher or what a person working for HR department can do in order to measure constructs, uh, something that they find important for uh, specific decisions or for predicting performance on a team level. On the other hand, the other type of topics is uh, focused on HR processes, so something that is related to recruitment, selection. Mainly, we are going to focus on fairness, so uh, we are going to discuss the problem of test bias, for instance, and how to measure uh, fairness related to um, hiring majority and minority groups. And later on, we are going to focus on utility, a topic that explains in what cases when specific uh, selection and recruitment processes um, are cheap, effective and uh, can be related to uh, performance. We have individual topics. So today we're going to focus on validity and reliability of personality measures related to HR processes. For some of you, especially for those who uh, took courses uh, MND or other specific courses in statistics or search methods, to a great extent this part can be seen as a repetition. But the reason why I'm doing this, uh, the reason why I do this repetition is that, that some of you have uh, little to no experience with stats, because this course is addressed to uh, students uh, who are coming not only from the psychology program but also coming from other courses where uh, they uh, had no opportunity to take any even general courses in stats. So please take into account that um, audience for this course is uh, quite diverse. So maybe if you uh, feel really comfortable in some topics you can just skip some slides and save some, uh, such time um, for additional activities within the course. If uh, those topics are new to you, please spend sufficient time on going through um, those basic uh, slides related to, uh, for instance, re reliability or validity of uh, psychological instruments. It would be really important for you to understand those basic constructs because later on we are going to expand those topics. Uh, we are going to focus on methods that can help to extend validity of uh, personality measures, for instance. Then we are going to focus on building, developing and validating methods, uh, different types of instruments that can be used for uh, selection of personnel. Then in week number three, we are going to understand uh, test fairness. What does it mean that specific test or specific um, personal selection methods is fair? And what happens if a measurement is biased? And to what extent that can negatively affect HR processes within a company? 
Then, in week four, I'm going to introduce the problem of uh, different levels of measurement, team, individual team and organization levels of measurement, of uh, diagnosis, and um, what kind of instruments can be used, what kind of specific statistical procedures uh, could be applied in order to uh, properly address the problem of this multi-level structure of organizations. Then in week five uh, I'm going to focus on utility and uh, following decision-making models that can be implemented in order to make specific personnel selection uh, procedures um, more efficient or cheaper depending uh, on the needs of a specific team, a specific company. Then we're going to have uh, two units focused on application of uh, different methods and approaches to personal uh, psychology. Uh, we are going to have two guest lectures that show different approaches to measurement of specific uh, traits or skills that can be used for personal uh, selection. So, besides two lectures, uh, there will be, of course, a unit uh, that will help you to prepare for the exam. But also important topic for this introduction is that there are some readings uh, that uh, you need to um, read in order to properly prepare for uh, this course. Those textbooks uh, were presented uh, on Canvas, so if you missed um, this information, go back to Canvas once more and see how to get access to uh, the textbooks. So in overall, we're going to have seven lectures uh, and Q&A sessions, so seven Mondays. And also we're going to have seven work groups, uh, uh, seven seminars. Okay, what's important for this course is that you, you read this textbook. That's the first one. You can download it as a whole ebook from a full library. Uh, of course, you don't have to read all of that. I've selected a few chapters uh, to know what chapters you have to read check course manual that was recently published on Canvas. This textbook, uh, this textbook focuses on psychology of recruitment, selection and employee retention. Of course, given the fact that we want to focus on personal um, selection, you probably would like to focus on specific chapters related to this one. Employee retention is less important. For this course. Second book, second obligatory reading, and of course you don't have to read the whole book. I've selected a few chapters that overlap with the contents of this course. You can also find um, through full library. That's also available as an ebook. So make sure that uh, within next few days you uh, get access to it and read recommended chapters for specific week. Okay, great. I hope that it's clear how you should prepare, uh, what kind of basics readings you need to follow. Let's move on. Let's focus on specific requirements. First requirements is related to your psychometrical project. Important element uh, introduction is uh, preparing a proposal. The proposal has to be written in a team, in a group of uh, maximum three students, and to uh, see what you have to write in the proposal, check Canvas for the form. There is a brief document uh, which indicates what elements should be included within the form. By submitting this form, you will also inform us 
uh, me as your tutor or other Dan or Ster as your tutors, you'll inform us who are the members of a specific team. Remember that you can continue your project only if your proposal was approved by your tutor. If it's not approved, your tutor will help you, will instruct you how to improve the proposal, what has to be there, uh, what is missing, and then you will have uh, opportunity um, to submit the proposal once again. Typically, within the course, 95% of students are able to go through this stage uh, without necessity to uh, correct their proposal. But nevertheless, uh, if you will uh, face some troubles, we will always help you um, to deal with this assignment. So, um, yeah, stay positive. The proposal has to be submitted within three weeks. So, uh, it's quite a lot of time uh, to work on this assignment. And of course, throughout this course, we'll help you, um, we'll instruct you in more detail what and how it should be written uh, within the proposal. The deadline is set on Monday, September 23rd, uh, because if you submit that on Monday, it will give us uh, a few days uh, to, to read it, to give you feedback and prepare more feedback um, for a meeting online for a work group on Wednesday 23rd. Uh, so this Wednesday uh, would be a day of feedback. So each tutor will provide general feedback on general elements related to uh, proposals, but also each team will get individual feedback, either in Word or uh, during a meeting. Another requirement is exam. All lectures, uh, video clips, Q&A sessions, and also work groups, they will help you to prepare for an exam, which counts or, uh, as 70% of the overall grade. You are going to have uh, 40 multiple choice items uh, in the exam, five open-ended items, uh, for instance, uh, an assignment or open-ended in the question, uh, if you would like to see uh, what to expect during the exam, see the mock exam, which is available on Canvas. At the end of the course, in week 7, we are going to do a mock exam. So uh, later on, you will have some time to ask questions uh, regarding some specific aspects of, uh, of the exam. What is important is that you can pass the exam. Um, by doing uh, MC uh, multiple choice questions and open-ended questions. They can compensate each other. Typically, to pass the exam, you need to uh, do well in the multiple choice uh, part and answer to at least a few, uh, three, four open-ended uh, items in order to pass the exam. What is important is that to pass the exam, you need to uh, know what was lectured, uh, you need to be present in the work groups, and of course, follow the obligatory readings. Exam will consist of items that are created based on the slides, so uh, or video clips, something that we're going to discuss within the work groups and based on obligatory readings. As you probably know, in the course manual, we have some additional readings. Those additional readings will not be part of the exam. They are there just to indicate what kind of additional contents uh, you can know in order to better understand specific topic. So for instance, we have uh, a few additional readings regarding multi-level structure of uh, organizations and how to deal with uh, this problem on the data analysis level. So feel free to read all those uh, additional readings, but do not worry uh, about the exam. You don't have to know those additional readings for the exam. 
In order to pass the course, exam need to be sufficient. So you need to get at least uh, 7.5 in the exam. Exam will be held on October 20. And of course, uh, it would be done online. Another part of this course is report. It accounts for 30% of um, the overall grade. And it's done as a group assignment. To submit a report, you need to use a form, which already is available on Canvas. If you'd like to know more, for instance, how um, report is graded, uh, please check uh, our grading standards that are published also in the course manual. Of course, if you have uh, specific questions regarding how to write a report, please feel free to contact your tutor. So, for instance, if uh, you've been allocated to group 1, you're going to discuss this assignment with me. As the exam, also this part uh, should be seen, uh, uh, should be passed as sufficient. If it's not, our submission, so reset uh, of the report is necessary in order to pass the whole uh, course. The deadline um, is October 29. I thought that would be really nice to give you a bit more time to work on it just to make sure that uh, you did everything that is necessary and I think that having more time for this uh, will simply help you to uh, submit a good maybe high quality um, of work later on. And of course one of the not maybe requirements but um, recommendation is that it's really important to be active, to uh, be an active attendee during Q&A sessions and also during the workshops. So your active attendance is, of course, more than welcome. What else is important for this course? There are some specific assignments and quizzes. Let me go through that briefly. One of the uh, assignments, uh, if you pass this additional assignment, you can get some bonus points. This assignment is related to our idea that through specific assignments, we help you to learn more about uh, building, creating, adapting uh, novel methods that can be used for specific purposes in personal selection. In this case, Dan uh, prepared an assignment that will help you to know more about personality or trait uh, measures. There will be two surveys. You can check manual for links. And those surveys, um, they introduce specific research uh, topic in two phases. Those servers are related to a specific practice of uh, test use in uh, work and organizational uh, context. It shows how, for instance, specific method can be validated in a specific group of students or specific group in overall. To reward you for participation, uh, we suggest this kind of solution. Because this assignment is not obligatory, you can pass the course without participating in this uh, test validation process. Uh, but if you take part in it, you will get extra 0.25 to your grade. So for instance, if uh, in the exam and based on the report, you will get 7.05, and then you will participate in this assignment um, your result will be 7.3 and as a result uh, 7.5 grade will be uh, uploaded onto FUNET.
What are other assignments? Along with this video, other videos will be uh, published. So watching video clips and later on attending Q&A sessions is uh, one of the assignments. And of course, it's highly recommended. It will help you to prepare for the work groups. And of course, those video clips, those additional assignments, attending Q&A sessions will help you to prepare for the exam. On Canvas, you can find slides, you can find video clips, additional readings, important course updates, discussions, questions, uh, or forums where you can put your concerns or requests. So an assignment here is uh, making sure that you are up to date, that you know everything that is related to the course, all important information that you need to know. Remember that all assignments, they have to be submitted um, as specific uh, Canvas assignments. If you work in a group, then remember that only group representative submits specific assignment. So for instance, if you are done with your proposal, it's not the whole group, each person submits uh, this assignment, it's enough if uh, one person submits. Because form uh, predicts that uh, if a if specific proposal is submitted, then all names of the authors of the proposal are indicated. And later on, we are going to submit our feedback at least to one person, to the person that submitted a specific assignment. So, in overall, what are the assignments? Preparations. Uh, it's really important to be prepared for this course. Quizzes. You can find those quizzes uh, on Canvas. Of course, uh, another assignment is a group project um, and group report. And this report and the whole project can be done uh, in a group up to three members. This uh, project um, um, will be guided by uh, your tutors. Uh, so in the course manual, you will find some specific steps described uh, one after another. So by reading the course manual, you will find what actually we do expect at specific stages, specific steps of the course manual. There are some individual practical assignments that can be consulted uh, during work groups. Later on, you will see um, after first or the second how things can be done um, within each work group. Okay, I think now it's a good moment that you start thinking with whom you would like to create this psychometrical uh, project. You can do it right away after watching this uh, video if you know uh, people who are going to uh, participate in this course. If this is not possible, uh, there are no colleagues of yours uh, in uh, taking this course. Later on during Q&A session or during work group, I will help you to find a teammate uh, with whom you can finish this assignment. Workgroups are going to be held on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Please check roster to find more details uh, related to the planning. Besides the roster, also on Canvas and in manual, I've indicated how we are going to organize those workgroups because some of the workgroups will be taught by a teacher so it could be me it could be Dan or it could be Stere but some of the workgroups are only taught by me so please make sure that you know um, who is going to uh, be your uh, tutor do you know how to find a workgroup if not I will help you during uh, the first class on Monday to find to which group you 
uh, block. Of course, the whole course is going to be taught online, but we find that your attendance in the workgroups is obligatory. Try not to miss more than two workgroups. If you miss uh, three or more, then it can be problematic for you to successfully finish exam. And also, it can be pretty problematic to know what kind of steps you need to follow in order to finish your group assignment. Within the group, you do most of the assignments. You're going to prepare for the psychometrical report, but also you are going to do some assignments, tasks that require open-ended responses, shorter or longer uh, open-ended responses. Those assignments, for instance, also can occur during the exam. So during the work groups, uh, we are going to practice some of the assignments that can um, be part of the exam. So attending work groups is important because in this sense, it will help you to prepare uh, for the exam. So remember that if you participate in a work group, it is expected from you to know what was necessary to read for a specific week. And also it is expected that you know the material that was presented as a lecture, as a video clip uh, on Monday. Okay, let's summarize what I said so far about the psychometrical project. So one important element is to prepare a proposal. If you do that well, you can think that around 30% of work is done for the psychometrical report. So please treat that seriously and uh, submit a proposal that is the best as you consider and to be the best because if it's a really good work then you can expect that uh, little feedback will be given not many uh, improvements uh, uh, will be necessary to make and thus later on you will have less work with your psychometrical report after finalizing your proposal after getting feedback uh, you will be requested to start working on a survey and preparing data collection. The proposal is about contextualization of an instrument. On Canvas, you can find some materials that will help you to prepare your proposal. So for the proposal, you select one of the given um, personality measures, so for instance self-control, and then based on what I'm going to lecture here, uh, then you are going to contextualize this measure. You are going to see how specific measure work in the context. So for instance, you can work, uh, you can uh, adapt a specific measure to work context, uh, to uh, work of a teacher or to work of, uh, uh, let's say, even a military man, uh, for instance, if you have access to this kind of sample. And then within the proposal, you're going to indicate some additional aspects. So we are going to indicate how you would like to assess uh, validity uh, of the specific measure, how we are going to measure congruent and other types of, uh, of validity. And also you're going to indicate what kind of um, organizational variables you're going to include uh, into your uh, project. And those elements related to your proposal 
then need to be translated into a specific survey. So for instance, your con contextualized questionnaire needs to be a part of the survey and also other measures that you've selected for uh, testing validity should be a part of your survey. So once your server is approved by a tutor, then you can prepare data collection. And if, per, uh, if this part is also approved, you can start collecting uh, information. When it's done, you will be requested to clean your data set and prepare it for data analysis. To help you with this part, it would be really important that you submit data set, finalized clean data set as soon as possible. The deadline for this activity is October 5th. It's Monday. So if you submit on Monday, then each tutor will have time to give you feedback on uh, the data set and will prepare some data analysis methods that later on during work group will be discussed with uh, each uh, project group. And later on, also during specific work groups, your tutor will help you to prepare a report. Also, you can ask some questions regarding the report on Canvas. So feel free to drop us a line to make sure that uh, you can finalize uh, this assignment and get as high grade as possible. So, good luck.